Hello class of 1971. And what I discovered was that when I looked at your senior pictures in the yearbook, I didn't recognize a lot of you because you weren't taking classes from a lowly uh, instructor such as I was in those days. I was basically a sophomore uh, since it was only my second year of teaching at Heidelberg. And since the first year, uh, 1969 to 70, ended with the Kent State shootings. And even though there were still many, many uh, demonstrations about politics and the war in Vietnam, et cetera, during your year, um, really that conclusion to the 1970 year was, um, I mean, it was really quite stunning. When I look at my grade book, it's, it's just a mess. And uh, all the people who were leaving and going to uh, going home or, or taking up uh, protest situations, um, really, really fascinating. So what I thought I would do is help you remember class of 1971. <laughs> uh, some of the people that you were very familiar with, probably more familiar than I was, uh, when during this particular year, because you'd been there four years, most of you, and I had, I had just come in. So I would like to remind you that President Fischel was just in his second year also of being the president. And uh, as we came in at the same time, and uh, he was a very revered professor by the younger folks. Uh, I know that Tiffin, the, the city, the community, had some problems with him and his response to the Vietnam War and the, uh, per, the uh, I guess I was going to say parades, not parades, uh, the long walks we, we took holding candles, et cetera, through the um, streets of Tiffin. So that was really quite, uh, quite a way to uh, initiate one's teaching. And uh, I, I know that some of the older faculty were, were quite distraught over what happened to their classes at the end of 1969-70. So I suppose we were looking forward to a return to the normal. Doesn't that sound like a familiar phrase? Uh, in 1971, or 70 to 71. And uh, I was just getting my feet wet uh, as Ruth Wallstrom, uh, the assistant professor of English, along with several of the newer faculty as well. And, and I would like to remind you that there were always very few women who were in the English department and perhaps across the campus in professor, as professors. Um, when I arrived, I entered the English department, which already had two legacy professors. One of them, of course, Dr. Lemke, who was known for his excellent knowledge of Shakespeare and for being an extraordinary man who, even in his 70s, lived in the Y and took his meals at Heidelberg, which is how he got to know many, many students very well and, and why they liked him so well, uh, because he knew them and he was interested in them. And I've heard more uh, alums in past years talk about the fact that he was a person that they revered in that for that respect, as well as for his uh, professional uh, finesse. Also in the department uh, was Alan McKenzie, who was, uh, I quickly discovered, renowned for his ability to read the literature of various uh, canonical figures. And uh, he, I think, probably didn't welcome the fact that there were three women who were now his colleagues in the English department. But uh, we enjoyed and were oblivious to this fact, I presume. The we that I'm referring to are Anita Hibbler, who was uh, even younger than I, who came from Cleveland, uh, from the University of Wisconsin, to teach in the English department, and Rhea Gaunt, who had a really interesting background. Uh, although she was originally from Travis City, Michigan, she had taught at The Hague, in the high, the high school at The Hague in the Netherlands, um, and, and had decided to return to the U.S. and assume, uh, re, uh, assume a more typical role as, as an English teacher. Probably some of you will remember Rhea because 
she was the one who, uh, during spring break, uh, eloped with Hal Dalrymple, who was also an equally young, uh, callow youth, uh, in the theater department, speech and theater. And that was what that caused quite a stir. <laughs> and unfortunately, uh, the two of them did not last long together as a couple. Uh, but because they, they both left at the end of that year. And I, although I have stayed in touch with Anita and the person who came to replace Rhea the next year, Janet McElwain, um, I have not stayed in touch with Rhea. So I, I can't give you any further information about her. Another astonishing thing uh, about the English department was that the two, the two men who also filled out the roster were unusual. Chuck Bernard, uh, and he had quite a few stories about him and his affiliation with the students, because he was young as well, uh, was in his fifth and final year uh, of teaching at Heidelberg. And so um, he had, uh, he was sort of nostalgic his whole year through. The other member was a former quarterback, an all-American quarterback at Hamilton College, Dick Blessing, who had decided to become a poet. And in fact, he did. Uh, he left Heidelberg at the end of the year as well and went to the University of Washington, which is where he ended his career. Alas, unfortunately, uh, at a very young age, uh, developed a brain, an inoperable brain tumor and died at the age of 50. But he was uh, well known amongst the males on campus. And one of the astonishments in, for Dr. Lemke and for the English department was that there were 72 people who signed up for his modern American novel class. And we assume that was because many of them were athletes and enjoyed hearing uh, Dr. Blessing talk about sports as well as literature. So anyway, it was, it was a fascinating way to begin. I realized in a sense, only in retrospect. And uh, what I also came to revere were many of the other well-established faculty members at Heidelberg. And many of them are ones you know. As I was looking through the yearbook and the pictures of the faculty, uh, so many of them were, were, were not only accomplished then, but accomplished great things later on. Uh, like Dave Baker, who recently died after uh, an enormous effect upon the water quality lab and the research facility that is well known across the nation uh, and perhaps the world, yes, I think. Uh, Dave Baker and George Barlow, Percy Lilly, Howard Hintz, all of them were stalwarts in the biology department, and I'm sure many of you remember them. Uh, Doc Rocks, Ed Ashworth, who was the geology professor, uh, much beloved. Reverend Hobbs, if you remember the chaplain at the time, and his beautiful baby blue academic robe from St. Andrews in Scotland, uh, was uh, a person who, who was, was well needed on campus uh, for the uh, comfort that he provided students during those tr troubled times. Other people uh, in the, who were faculty, um, Richard Cordell, well known for his difficult uh, chemistry classes, especially organic. Dick Kissling, uh, whose uh, blindness uh, did not stop him from teaching many, many, many more years as he went uh, into the South to be with family more. Um, but he was a, a delightful person. And uh, let's see, I'm going to talk about some others as well. Um, the office that I moved into was in, we called it then, the U Building. Uh, then it became College Hall, and now it's gone to U Hall, which does not really thrill those of us who knew it as the U Building, and we think that's just perfect. So we oftentimes refer to it like that. Anyway, my office was there uh, underneath uh, the the middle, well, it's it's the peaked front doorway, uh, uh, my, my office was right behind that. Part of the window was blocked off because of that. And um, Chuck Bernard, uh, later on Sally Parr, who, was, who became a good friend of mine teaching English. Nils Parr was her husband in economics. And um, 
Don Shepard, who taught uh, an occasional education class, were in that office as well. We were located in the office that was, and the office above us was uh, occupied by Dr. Leon Putnam and Dr. Rudolf Muska, well-known philosophy professors. And their office was unique because it had the bell rope. And I think the bell rope is probably still up there. And we're always happy to have somebody have to go up there and ring the bell when a victory is uh, uh, accomplished. <laughs> okay. Um, other professors that, that I think some of you remember with great fondness are Frank Kramer, who taught classics. Uh, there aren't many colleges of Heidelberg size, I suspect, left that have a division called classics. Uh, Dr. Kramer was much beloved for his ancient and modern problems class that he developed himself and for his mythology class and, notably, for his ability to write on the board with a piece of chalk in each hand and write his name and connect it up in the middle. I'm sure many of you remember that. <laughs> okay. There were other people, um, not as young as we were, but young, uh, who were well-known. Um, Tom Marukas, uh, certainly one of them. Dan Min, Dan, Tom Marukas taught uh, history, I believe, that section. And Dan Min's taught political science. Um, so uh, again, you, you hear how many males there were, uh, and that uh, has changed happily at Heidelberg. Uh, I think we have a much more balanced number between male and female professors. Ms. Cooley in the health service, Ms. Christman as a registrar uh, were well-known pillars of, of the campus. And I'm, oh, I'm, now I'm moving over into the speech department where Toothy Ruthie, uh, one of our favorite <laughs> uh, speech teachers, Ruth Bacon, uh, was, much, was much loved. Leanne Wolf would later on become uh, a pillar as well. Uh, was teaching part-time, I believe, then. And most uh, effective uh, person for me in that Founders Building was James Lee Austin, because I loved theater, and theater became very, very important. Um, Dave, also known as Blue Bradbury, is one of the class of 1971 who called and wanted me to do this. <laughs> and... Um, what he and I remember together are all the plays that he worked behind the scenes on or was on the stage for uh, the Fantastics being one of the most fantastic productions. And uh, his die again, Mortimer, will be ringing still through the Great Hall. And I mentioned the Great Hall because uh, Gunlock Theater was yet to be built. And uh, Mr. Austin showed his finesse in being able to stage plays everywhere on campus or anywhere on campus. Uh, I remember going to plays in Founders Hall, which is that time, and also the Founders Theater, the little theater. I mean, it did work as a theater, but it was very small, as you know. Um, he also staged plays in the Great Hall. Uh, that's where we saw Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead, I believe, with. Bruce Bergun and Jim Bolton, was it, uh, as major characters? And later on, I think, a Shakespeare play in which Bruce Bergun perhaps was uh, Richard III. Uh, what, what Austin was able to do was to create a theater out of almost anywhere. And, and that was one of his, well, it, it, it caused a great deal of problems, of course, but, but, but for him as well as for other people. But nevertheless, he managed it beautifully. Uh, the Tin Gym, no longer on the campus, of course. It was, it was taken down not too long ago. Um, but that was notable for its cabaret performance with Brian Hammond playing the MC. Let's see. I'm looking at a list of notes, of course. Um, as long as I'm moving past founders, there is a building that is no longer there. It's a ghost building now, but you will remember it, class of 1971, as housing the castle. And the castle is a name that has stuck to various places on campus. But 
uh, the castle then was a coffee place and a meeting place where I met several faculty who became very important to me uh, in terms of telling me about the college and giving me guidance in terms of uh, rules and regulations, etc. And that was to have coffee there uh, at 10 o'clock in the morning. And there I met Henry Gibson, who was in music. And Tom Hamill, I believe, was also part of it. Dean Hunter, who was one of our few foreign professors, uh, also uh, drank tea, I suspect, for him. And uh, there were others that I know regularly showed up at that coffee hour. And I found that indispensable for getting to know people and being introduced to others through them. I mentioned Tom Hamill, and that has moved us across the street into the music building. And of course, the stalwart figures there, the Oles. Ferris Ole uh, was a leader of the music department for years and years and years. Uh, the concert choir, many, many members have fond memories of that, as you will see at the reunion. And uh, Dorothy O was a constant uh, companion, not well, his wife, of course, and a companist for, for many of the students. And uh, the uh, other people in the music department, Catherine Feet, later on, I knew her quite well. Uh, very, very important uh, people in the history of Heidelberg faculty. Ah, let's see. Other people that you shouldn't forget, it seems to me, are uh, Dr. Dick Hostetler. He taught a course called Literature and Fine Arts. And if there were noise here, I think I hear groans from students, but gr grateful groans, uh, because I remember being told, um, oh, probably in one of the first semesters that I was on the campus, uh, when the campus seemed to take on a whole tense aura that, oh, it's the first exam in Lit and Fine Arts. And since every junior and senior had to take and pass that course, uh, there really was a sense of camaraderie on the campus having to do with that difficult course. Um, and and it, that's been a kind of favorite memory amongst some of the faculty too. Other, other anomalies, I suppose you'd say, um, on campus and new topics. I, I, I noticed in the yearbook that one of the topics of discussion was new curriculum. There were students gathered all uh, up and down the steps uh, behind the U building. Uh, uh, I suppose uh, pleading for, pressuring uh, the administration to change some of the uh, courses and requirements. I don't remember specifics, but but I'm I'm willing to believe that that was the case. Um, the one of the, the changes that occurred that was very positive and went in a direction that many other schools have gone and stayed. Uh, Dr. Davison, who was a history professor, uh, had decided that we should have an American Studies department, and uh, he recruited some very capable faculty members to come and teach there. Um, the year that I was there, Bruce Lohoff was a faculty member, and uh, Lena Margaret Funk, who was on campus only one year, that year, I believe, um, also was part of the, the process of moving towards uh, a, a very definite American studies uh, emphasis. And, and that uh, turned into a, a, a major for many of the Heidelberg students who came along later. Okay, I said anomalies. Well, the, uh, things that make Heidelberg Heidelberg, definitely T Bridge. <laughs> you can't talk to faculty members who uh, remember that kind of process, and certainly students who remember the T Bridge process, which I understand has undergone some changes, but vestiges of other kept. Uh, Greek Sing was always a huge event on campus, and convocation. Convocation uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays, I believe, uh, required also a certain number, and that lasted for many years beyond the class of 1971. Another uh, totally surprising event for me 
was to give um, final exams in Cyberling Gymnasium. Um, I'm not sure why that started, but uh, chairs would be lined up in rows and faculty members were there to hand out exams and monitor students, not only in their classes, but in other classes as they took their finals. That didn't last a whole long time after this era, I think. But the other event that did occur many times during my uh, faculty teaching times was registration. Twice a year, we would register for the next semester classes by lining up in, in Cyberling and sitting at, for us, sitting at tables and handing out cards of admission to classes. So I hope some of those memories are bringing back to you some exciting things uh, about Heidelberg and, and how we developed the kind of um, aura, friendship, community uh, that we like to say uh, is, is a trait, trait of Heidelberg's uh, undergraduate degree. One of the things that I discovered also as I looked at the yearbook was uh, the fact that there were 13 English majors who graduated in 1971. I did not, as I said, did not get to teach many of them, uh, although their names are somewhat familiar because I, I did see them at, at going to other classes. One of the distinctive uh, people in the class was uh, a man from Japan, Toshi Toshiaki Ishiguro who got an English major and many years later came back uh, for a banquet. Uh, just in his, he was making a remembrance tour at the States and it was nice to see him again. Let's see, I'm looking at a, a page of notes as you, would, as you would guess. Specific people that I remember and that I think you probably would too are Mike Cole, uh, certainly a very stalwart uh, alum who would uh, encourage students in his high school classes to apply and come to Heidelberg. Uh, Bruce Farmer, uh, who became, uh, eventually became a priest. Um, and Paul Costu, whose life at Ohio Wesleyan probably rivaled the long life of people like me in, in small colleges where he developed an entire journalism department and just recently retired. Marilyn Muntz and John Chittister, I think John graduated in 1970, uh, were a couple who then later in life, they were both English majors, later in life uh, had three children, two of whom uh, became students at Heidelberg and one of, whom, one of them, Bob Chittister, uh, had an English major as well. He also taught uh, in the uh, 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 anthropology department at Heidelberg in later years. Marianne Parr, a delightful student I remember. Kathy Weta, who also was very accomplished. Uh, Linnell Moore, who was a rare art major at Heidelberg and went on to become a librarian who specialized in art. Nancy Needham. Chip Goodrich was also a, a, an author. Uh, Mariana Palmer, uh, one of the students that I was very fond of, who was one of the rare art majors, uh, and she has made her had she has made her life uh, out of art really, and, and in many different ways, uh, in the classroom as well as in camps and so forth and so on. KJ, Kathy Jo Montgomery is a name that many of you know, and she is uh, often on campus. And I believe a trustee, I'm looking at Sydney. Is she a trustee? No, she's not a trustee. Okay, but she certainly deserves to be a trustee. Okay. Uh, Ray Lisey, a familiar uh, Ohio name. Uh, Kim Kennedy, Carol Zog, uh, Beth Melanson, quite a jokester as I recall. All of these are names from my grade book. Uh, I still have all my grade books. Uh, when I open the class, the uh, the one for the 1970 to 71 and looked at names. I was pleasantly surprised to recognize many of them and faces flashed before me. And then I looked at grades and I thought, what a tough grader I was. Oh, it's a wonder any of these people want to see me again. 
Um, so um, I, it's no consolation to say that I, I suppose I changed my ways and, and perhaps became a better professor. I just don't know. But uh, anyway, one of my colleagues said that he had burned all of his grade books the day after he retired. And I, I can understand why you might want to do that, but I'm very happy that I didn't because it certainly reminds me about people. I think that probably, I'm, I'm glancing over here. Let's see, we have Dave Noss, uh, Tom Marukas. Uh, did I mention him before? Uh, these, were, these were faculty members who really gave a different quality to the, the campus uh, in the short time for some of them, long time for others that they taught at Heidelberg. Certainly, I've had a good life at Heidelberg. Continues to be, uh, a, 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 I suppose, the place that I circulate around uh, and, and go to campus as much as possible, obviously not this last year, but we just attended 9 to 5, the musical, live in Gunlock Theater. Nancy Rubenstein and I had collaborated and we urged them in the theater department to develop plans for putting in handrails. Now that we're getting older and uh, they are not only installed, but magnificent. There really are uh, good choices on the part of the, the two men, Stephen Svoboda and David Cottrell, who uh, chose, researched and chose the, the handrails for gun luck. So if you are coming to Heidelberg and taking a tour, be sure to notice them. I think that's probably enough memorizing <laughs> of, of memorials and uh, other uh, Oh, thoughts that have been going through my mind as, as I uh, look at my notes and, and remember people. I hope everybody has a good trip to Heidelberg for their reunion. I hope it does happen. It does seem very likely that it is going to happen. And um, I look forward to seeing many people on campus. Thank you.